Hello and welcome to the Engineering Dynamics Course Companion. We are starting with class 13 and this is the kinematics of rigid bodies. So we are now in book two. Um, today's class is angular kinematics of rigid body motion. All right. So uh, as always, you can go down to the description below and go to the table of contents and uh, jump to the example. So the bottom line up front for today for rigid body motion, um, it's a combination, all rigid body motion is a combination of translation and rotation. Today we're mostly going to do, we're just going to do rotation, but we do want to try to introduce that big idea that how uh, that rigid body motion is different from uh, using particles. Uh, now rotation kinematics, um, they, they have uh, the same fundamental, uh, they, they have uh, analogous uh, equations to the fundamental kinematic relations that we covered all the way back in class one. But now we're going to use angles, right? So we have position, now is like theta is what we call. We have angular velocity, uh, which we're going to call omega, is going to be the time rate change of that angular position. By the way, I didn't write it out here, but we could also write that as theta dot, right? As, as you'll recall, we could use them interchangeably. Um, we also have angular acceleration, which could be the time rate change of angular velocity or the second derivative with respect to time of the angular position. We can also have an analogous thing to the, uh, the acceleration, if, as you recall, where we have the alpha, which is angular acceleration, is equal to omega times d omega d theta. By the way, um, any time that you have that alpha, you could also substitute it with a theta double dot if you want to. So um, we, when, when in the case, in the special case, when there's constant angular velocity, we can use uh, this equation to find the position. In the special case, when there's constant angular acceleration, we could use these equations right here, where we have, we could find omega, uh, with a constant alpha right here. We could find theta by having uh, this equation right here. Or we could find the omega if we happen to know the uh, angular acceleration and the change in angular position. So these are all analogous to stuff that we did in like classes two. Like one, classes one, two, and uh, yes, one and two. All right, so these are related, yeah, but I just, it's just like I said right here, well, boom, in volume one. Okay, so um, the big idea here uh, for rigid body motion, and I wish I had made an orange boomerang. That would have been a good thing to, to use. Hmm. So what can I use? What could I use? Anyway, oh, I have this right here. Okay. Doesn't matter what this is. Um, okay, so let's say we have a point A and a point B. Uh, we could keep track of those uh, and use those as reference for this rigid body. And it could be rotating and it can be translating at the same time. So it's translating with a velocity and then it's rotating. So all the rigid body motion can be described as a combination of that translation and rotation, right? So here I've used this boomerang um, with these two points and we use those two points as a means of trying to keep track. And by rigid body, we mean that point A and point B can't move away from each other, right? So that thing, it, it makes it rigid. Uh, and we use a position vector to try of uh, some arbitrary point here, uh, zero, to, as a means to try to keep track of this thing right here. So they have that translation where it's just moving to the side, and then we have this rotation where we're treating it like as if it was pinned, like that it could rotate about something, right? So we have this motion here where it's rotating uh, and translating. So, and so we, we want to make the, you know, distinction that sometimes things can uh, translate and pure rotate, pure translation, kind of like, almost like a knuckleball, although, you know, the thing is wavering through the air. But that's the idea, like, you know, you're throwing something and it, it doesn't rotate at all. Um, and then you could also have something that's in pure rotation where it's like fixed upon an axis and it's just spinning about one, about one point right there, right? Uh, that can take place. 
So pure rotation looks that way, and that's really what we're covering today. Um, if we want to try to find the velocity at a particular point in pure rotation, we take the uh, um, angular velocity of the thing, omega, and we cross it against the position vector r a with respect to b. So now b is the fixed point right here. Um, we Quite often, we want to just find the magnitudes of them. So uh, we, we, we don't necessarily need to cross it to be, to be able to find this value um, because it, it's uh, uh, really just uh, the multiplication of the angular velocity times the length of the thing. So that's uh, the cross product. Is a good, we want to recognize that it's a cross product. Uh, but but for uh, when we do simple problems, it's a practical thing. We could just multiply the angular velocity by the length. Um, the for acceleration, right? So I said uh, I said rotational velocity, but it also I do, do want to uh, emphasize here. It's good to point it out. This happens several classes from now where we deal with acceleration. But we do want to know there's like an analogous thing for the tangential acceleration is going to be the alpha time uh, crossed with the uh, rotation A with respect to B. So I'm going to take where my appointments are in 15 minutes. Just better make it fast. Um, the, the, so the alpha gets crossed with the, uh, rel the position vector RA with respect to B. And as a practical uh, thing, in the tangential uh, direction, that acceleration right here is just going to be the alpha times the length, or RA, with respect to B. Now in the normal direction, we have a difference here. We have negative omega squared times that position vector because that acceleration in the normal direction is now pointing towards the, the center of rotation, which is the fixed pin. And uh, so as a practical thing, we just define the magnitude of that. It's just omega squared times the r. Now, that's good things to know, but but we're going with, today's, we're most, mostly concentrating on the angular kinematic equations. Um, we just wrote them, set them all out in the bottom line up front. They can be analogous to the translational uh, kinematics right here. Uh, check them out. Omega is equal to d uh, theta dt, just like v is equal to dx dt. Um, alpha is equal to d uh, omega dt. Um, also equal to the second derivative of theta uh, with respect to t at the time. And then uh, um, this should be an a. Look, that's another mistake right there. a. Somebody should have uh, should have like uh, checked this, huh? A is equal to, and I decided to go z for some reason. Z double dot doesn't make any sense. Uh, it should be x right there. So that was really a good one. Uh, dv dt, or the second derivative uh, of, of position x with respect to time. Um, and then we have alpha is equal to omega d uh, omega d theta, right? This is like the wild card uh, one right here. Um, and it's analogous. And once again, that should be a right here. Um, well, that was great. So for uniform uh, special cases, right, this is for uniform motion right here. Um, if we have in the angular one, right, as we just already mentioned, and here's the translational one, you could kind of see how they're related. Let's see if we could find any other mistakes in there. Now, they had them written out, it looks like, correctly in here. Uh, but, but here's like the one that we, we often will forget that exists, right? Um, so if something's spinning and it's speeding up, uh, that's the uh, that would be like uh, these cases down here where it's but it's speeding up at a constant rate uh, that we would use. But that doesn't necessarily have to be true. Uh, the angular acceleration can be can change with time. Um, therefore, uh, this is can this these right here can only be used in the uh, when, when we have that particular case when we have constant uh, uh, either constant velocity, angular velocity in the first equation, or constant angular acceleration, as in the bottom three equations. So here's the example. Uh, we have the small engine, and it's running at its idle speed of 500 RPM, counterclockwise. Uh, when the throttle is increased to bring it up to its full speed of 3,600 RPM, and that takes 10 seconds to happen, right? 
Um, and we have to assume, I think, that it's going to be a constant uh, increase in speed. Uh, the engine runs for 30 seconds at full speed before it is turned off and the thing coasts down and it takes 45 seconds for it to coast down uh, to get to zero. So we want to turn, determine the total number of revolutions of the engine uh, rotates uh, from the throttle increase to it stopping. Right. So what we'd want to do, let's turn these uh, speeds that we're given, turn them into radians per second. That's good practice. It's not 100% necessary, but it is good practice here. Um, just to get the units working to the right thing. So we could find what the acceleration um, at idle speed is going to be just by taking the basic uh, omega is equal to omega naught uh, plus alpha uh, times a t right here, right? So we know what that uh, the change in angular velocity is and we know the time. So we plug those in and we find that it's 32.46 radians per second squared is increasing. And we could find the angular position of between uh, changing from idle speed to full speed right there. We're assuming that this is going to be that what we just found up above was constant, right? That uh, uh, that that it was you know, it could have varied with time, so we would have had to do some uh, integration to be able to find it, but now we assumed it's constant. So we could use this constant uh, uh, angular position uh, equation right here, this constant angular acceleration uh, to find the position, um, and we find that it had moved 2.147 radians, right? The uh, angular uh, position after it's been running at full speed, right? So we could uh, uh, say now we know that it's going at uh, omega, right? So that was going to be a constant speed uh, at 3,600 RPM uh, for 30 seconds, right? So uh, we go ahead and uh, plug those equations in, plug those values in. And I think it should be, is that 2,000? I think, okay, maybe I said it was 2,147 up above. And so this is 13,460 radians uh, that has moved while it's at constant uh, speed. Um, and then while it's, we, we want to find the deceleration right there. So we rewrite this um, equation and we find that we have, it's 8.378 radians per second. So that's, uh, that's how it's slowing down. Um, so we figure out the angular position then uh, that takes place right there. So we went from uh, 13,460 uh, right there. Now it's at 21,940, right? Um, that seems like it might be... No, 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 that's fine. Yep, 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 that's correct. Okay. So that's the uh, uh, amount of uh, uh, yeah, the angle that it has moved, right? So the total revolutions uh, should be um, that uh, 21,940 right there uh, divided by 2 pi, right? So it's 3,492 revolutions have taken place. So that's uh, kind of the, the, the idea behind um, applying the angular version of these uh, kinematic equations, um, especially when it's in, in the constant realm. But we've got to be careful uh, to only use the... Uh, constant version of the equations when they're applicable. Um, so we could also have used this. So that's uh, something interesting to note. Uh, that because uh, um, yeah. So like if we had known, um, is that true? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Right. Okay. Um, for more examples, uh, please check out uh, the Engineering Dynamics Course Companion, Part 1 and Part 2. We are now in Part 2. And these are published by Morgan and Claypool. And uh, if you go down to the links uh, below, so you look, look down there, look, 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 down, look down, right, right down there. If you look down at those links below, uh, you'll see you'll be able to buy uh, the book. And it's also available on Amazon. Please subscribe to the channel, and there'll be more videos. And hopefully they'll be better than this one, because it wasn't all that great. But um, I'm Newt Dog, and this is Wormy. And thank you, and see you next time.